Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to today's canning chat. Yes, been looking forward to this all week long. We got some good questions. We have a couple of repeats. Um, remember that um, if you're new to the canning chats, please go to the playlist. I'll link it up above and down below so that you can listen to those and that may have the, an the answer to the question that you have, okay? But if you have any questions that I have not answered, uh, definitely, by all means, put them in the comment section below saying second time, and I will make sure to add that to the next canning chat. It is my intent, okay, that if I'm adding it to the canning chat, that I let you know to check back next week. That did not happen so much with this week's uh, responses because I didn't have time to deal with them over the weekend, and so literally I just I picked the last of them uh, today before doing the canning chat. So. Sorry about that, but that is hopefully the practice moving forward. Let's get started. Um, Annette M. says, I am very much a newbie to water bath canning. I've watched so many videos. I like to make the jams. My question is, I watched some videos where they say there's no need to water bath can. Just heat the jars in the oven, put it in a hot, put the hot jam in, put the lid and the ring on and turn them upside down for a few minutes. No, <laughs> okay, absolutely no, and that don't do that. That is not a safe approved method. In no way, shape, or form is that uh, approved. So not something to do. I would definitely still stick with water bath canning or steam canning. Either way, neither one is that difficult, um, and it is genuinely safe as opposed to the flip it upside down. Now I know people are going to say, well, my grandma always did this. Well, and I'm here to tell you for the umpteenth time that Grandma may have always done it that way because they didn't know any better, okay? And because things have changed. The food that you are canning is vastly different from the food that your grandmother canned. They may be raspberries or strawberries, but the chemical makeup is completely different due to the degradation of our soil. So, it's the same, but it's different. So, do it the approved method. Make sure everybody's safe. Wanda Weber asks... How come a regular ball lid and ring will fit a jelly jar and all is happy, but you cannot vacuum seal the jelly jar? What is the difference between the jelly jar and a pint jar? Okay, um, the thing, Wanda, is I'm not entirely certain. Okay, I'm not entirely certain what jelly jars you're referring to. If you're referring to the 8-ounce or 12-ounce or 4-ounce jelly jars that are used for canning, then they should seal. There should not be an issue. It will actually happen much quicker because there's less air in it, okay? Um, if you're talking about commercially canned jars or, you know, commercially canned jelly jars, then they're just, the lids may appear to fit, but may not be an authentic fit, and so they would not work that way. I hope that answers your question. Um, if it didn't, if you could specify more clearly what you mean by jelly jar, then maybe I can dig down a little deeper. Beth Muscat says, I was cleaning out my freezer and came across some frozen vacuum sealed potatoes, but they have the skins on them. Are they safe to pressure can with the skins on them? Side note, I am not a skin on my potatoes fan, but I don't want to waste them either. <clears throat> Aside from, <laughs> okay, um, all approved methods say to peel root vegetables because they they have nooks and crannies that we can't see that we can't possibly make sure are 100 percent you know clean and so they recommend to peel them the difference here is that they're already frozen being that they're already frozen there's a very good chance that uh you would end up with mush okay so i would say keep them frozen uh, you know, do whatever you can with them when you defrost them, but canning really wouldn't work. Uh, I think you'd be very unhappy with the outcome because once they're defrosted, you can pretty much mash them right there, right? So you don't want to can that. That'll just make them so super soft and just not palatable at all. So I would go no-no for both, okay? Uh, Patricia Royer, Royer, Royerden <laughs> Donner. Patricia A. Donner, I'm skipping your hyphenated name. Can cooked frozen meat be thawed and canned? If so, what is the best way to do it? Excellent question, actually. Um, so you know there's the raw pack method, ugly chicken, right? And then there's the not so ugly chicken where you par cook the chicken and you cut it up and you can that with a liquid. 
So because this is already cooked, as long as it's not breaded, okay, that's the, that's the caveat there. As long as there's no grain or breading of any kind on it, I would say can it with liquid. Do it like the hot pack method. That would be the easiest way to do it, um, the best way to do it, because it's already cooked. So you're not going to get a lot of natural juice out of it. It may become overcooked and really dry if you don't add the liquid. So if it is frozen, definitely first defrost it. And number two, make sure that it has no grains or breading or anything like that. Number three, find a broth to put with it. It can be something as simple as water or a diluted bouillon, you know, because bouillon is pretty salty. A diluted bouillon or some kind of stock that you have, and that's perfect. So totally doable with those caveats. Thanks for the great question. Uh, Denise Reeves says, newbie canner here, looking for some advice. That's why we're here. I was gifted a number 10 can of creamed corn and have been trying to figure out a use for it. Would it be safe to make a potato corn chowder base using potatoes, cream corns, onions, broth, and spice? The cream would be added when heating up after opening. Any ideas on how long it should process? Any advice or ideas would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Um, first, I want to know who are all you people who get gifted number 10 cans? <laughs> Nobody's ever given me a number 10 can. Um, okay, so cream corn. It's not something I eat. Uh, I mean, like maybe once a year. So I really don't know what is in commercially canned cream corn. Start there, okay? So if it has anything in the do not can list, you know, find out. Um, now, if you're going to make a chowder base using potatoes, cream corn, onions, broth, and spices, as long as it's not super thick, then you should be good. Um, you're not talking about mashing the potatoes, right? So chunks of potato, a little bit of cream corn, some broth, spices, onions, you should be good. On the National Center for Home Food Preservation, there is a link, there's their directions for canning soup. Okay, and I will link that down below for you and for everybody else who may want to see it. Um, it's a great, great thing to do and take a look at that. But I think a lot of this is going to be very dependent on what is in commercially canned creamed corn. Legitimately, I don't have a clue. So check that out first and then you can base your decision off that and the link down below. Great question. Thanks for asking. Um, Zacania Vita asks, can you pressurize jam? Will it change the jam texture? So I'm assuming pressure can. And the simple answer is no, don't pressure can it. Okay. Um, when you pressure can something, it is spending much longer in there than the water bath canner at a higher temperature. And you actually could ruin the jam. Yeah. The pectin probably wouldn't set. Um, you could burn up the sugar a little bit, you know, you may get a taste that you don't like. So no, water bath canning is the best way to do it. Uh, definitely water bath can or steam can your uh, jams and jellies. If you want, um, I'll put a link down below for the steam canner that I got. Very affordable, very easy. It will change your world when it comes to water bath canning because it's so much easier than water bath canning. I literally may not ever put anything in a pot of boiling water again. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, New York Jennifer says, I have a question you probably have answered in the past, but I can't find it. It involves sausage and sage. I am getting a pig soon and it's going to be on the big size, which probably means a lot of fat and therefore a lot of sausage. Yum. That I'll tell you, depends on your processor and the cuts that you get. Okay. Um, in any case, I love country sage sausage, but I'm afraid to can it due to the sage situation. Is it really that bad? I have always frozen all my pork in the past, but this spring I've been canning a lot of pork butt from the store when it's been 99 cents a pound, and I'd like to make sure at least some of this pig will be in jars instead of the freezer. Totally understand. Okay, so sage can intensify and become bitter when you pressure can it. It's the nature of the beast. Now, I don't know how much they put in it. I am going to assume that there is a minute amount of sage in our ground sausage. I should actually call and find that out, but I love the way it turns out. Ours turns out fine. It doesn't get bitter. Um, so uh, I guess I'd skip the sage just to be on the safe side. Okay. Um, because it can turn bitter and that would be 
that would be bad if you didn't, you know, have a product that you liked and the animal gave up its life for it and all that fun stuff. You know, when you consider all that, it may not be bad to skip the sage. Now, what can you do? Can the bulk sausage, just like, you know, can the bulk sausage, but when you go to use it, add a little bit of sage into it and you'll have that flavor there. So it's a win-win all the way. You're safe. There's no bitterness and you can determine how much sage you have in your sausage. I hope that helps. I hope it's, a, it's something you can work with. Anne Hare asks, hello, I've only been pressure canning for a few months and I'm probably overthinking this, but I'm using a weighted Presto canner. My question is, should the air vent cover lock pop up, meaning there's pressure, before the vent starts a steady stream of steam? Excellent question. I've covered this a few times in different videos. I don't think here in the canning shed though, but the the answer is it it's neither good nor is it bad. Some canner, canners have personalities. Okay, Presto pressure canners all have personalities and they all do their own little special thing. Now, I have canners that uh, before it starts venting a steady stream of steam, okay, that pressure lock comes up. I have other ones that you could vent that thing forever and until you put the weight on, it won't go up. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, that's just one of those things when you are, when you begin venting, okay, when you actually get to the venting process and you're venting for 10 minutes, by that point, once you're at that end of that 10 minutes, that pressure lock really should be up, okay? So go ahead, put it on, bring it up so that you're getting that steady stream of steam for 10 minutes. At the end of that 10 minutes, that pressure lock should be up. Um, if it goes up before that or if it goes up during that, doesn't matter, but it should go up before you put the regulator on. I hope that answers your question. Uh, in Spirit and Truth asks, what size jars would you recommend to store meat in for a family of four for one meal? In a spirit, in, in a spirit, in spirit and in truth, um, that is really dependent on you and your family. Now, I'm totally a carnivore. Phil likes his meat too. So for us, a pint jar, depending on what I'm making, is a meal for the two of us. Okay, but. I've used a quart jar to feed six of us. Um, I've, well, a quart jar, equal, equivalent to a quart jar. I only can in, in pints for the most part anymore. But, um, so that's two pints, you know. So it really depends on what you're making. If you're making casseroles, you know, that kind of stuff, a pint equals about a pound. So um, if you're making a casserole, a pound of meat is perfect. That's, that's where casseroles, I think, shine their brightest, right? Is because you can feed a lot for a little with a casserole. So casseroles and soups, you know, I, I always use a pint, but I'm only feeding two on the weekends. I feed up to seven and I will normally use two pints depending on what it is. And, uh, we're fine. Everyone's happy. I mean, I'll make a chicken pot pie or a beef pot pie that'll curl your toes, but you know, I, I depends on who I'm feeding and how many. So totally dependent on you, but figure a pint, a pound. Okay. A pint is a pound the world around, which is actually rather inaccurate, but that is what everyone gauges it at is a pound of meat for a pint. So, um, dependent on your family. And that's a really great question because when you're trying to plot out how many jars of meat you're going to need, um, you know, to get you through a month, two months, six months, a year. That's a good thing to sit down and figure out. What kind of meals does your family like? How much meat does it take to satisfy them? Great question. Rachel Nochi. I hope I got that right. Um, okay, an issue I've come to in this. I made what I wanted to be strawberry jam, but it didn't gel up as much at all. But it didn't gel up much at all. It is all processed correctly and is more the consistency of strawberry syrup. My question is, can I can, can I empty those jars back into the pot, add more pectin and reprocess them? Or would it be safer just to leave them alone? No, absolutely. Empty the jars, put them in the pot, add more pectin. Make sure you're bringing it up to that boil and letting it go for a minute. Don't go all crazy on it, right? And then put it back in new lids and reprocess it. Um, definitely you can do that. Uh, sometimes that happens. I, you know, not being there, not knowing what recipe you used or how you did it. 
Um, you know, I can't say that that'll be a for sure fix, but most likely that'll fix your problem. Um, and if you like strawberry syrup, save some of the stuff you already pro processed for strawberry syrup because strawberry syrup is good. Yes, it is. Margie Stokes. Wait, she says. <laughs> Am I the only one who looks at the jars and says, my precious? <laughs> okay. First of all, I just put that in there because I loved it. It made me laugh out loud. Um, being a token fan, I, I totally get it. And no, you're not the only one. I've been known to pet and coddle and whisper, my precious. <laughs> okay, so that was funny, Margie. Thank you very much. The Newbie Stutters. Great video. Okay, so question. I've never canned before, but I'm going to get over my fear and do it this summer. Wide mouth versus regular mouth jars. Is there a time when we need to pick one over the other or just purely preference? Great question. Great, great question. Um, it is purely preference, okay? Um, I think I've mentioned on here before that I buy almost all of my jars used, which means I get what I find. I have no true preference. Now, some people will, will prefer things like meats in wide mouth jars because they come out easier. You know, nothing gets hung up on that neck. Um, I don't find it to be an issue with my small mouth jars. Some people like, uh, you know, their soups or their stews in wide mouth jars because they're easier to get out that way. So it really is just a matter of preference um, and availability for that matter. Uh, today with everything that's going on, finding the jars and the lids that are available to you is very, very important. Um, I am set 120% for small mouth jars, so I'm glad I don't have a preference, uh, but I am getting a little concerned about my wide mouth jars because my stash is dwindling rather quickly, and so I'm looking for a source for wide mouth jars. When I do experiment experiments, I'm going to be doing it with wide mouth jars, okay, um, because I... <sighs> I can't find them, literally cannot find them, cannot order them, and I'm unwilling to pay the extortionist prices that some places are trying to do. Now, I am going to be doing a test, I mentioned this in Monday Night Live, I'm going to order some Denali lids and give them a try. Um, the Canaware lids that I found at the Amish store, I'm going to do those and give them a try, um, just to bring you guys along and show you, you know, the results from it, but as far as finding reliable lids that I know and trust, um, I'm not finding them in wide mouth at all. And from the comments that I'm reading, they're not seeing them either. So if you have the, you know, if you have them great and you prefer that, that's great. It's truly preference. It's 100% preference. You do you. That's all that matters. The last question for today is from Sharon Smith. And Sharon says, what is the highest temperature in my room to store my canned food? Making a closet for the canned product. Okay. So the ideal circumstances for storing your canned food is anywhere between 50 degrees and 70, 75 degrees, okay? No moisture, no light, and cool. Anything over that, they don't say is a good thing. And it's mainly because all of those factors can diminish the nutrients in your food and the excessive heat can mess with your seals if it's excessive for a long period of time. Um, I had somebody ask me today because of the heat wave that's going on, they were concerned about, you know, their, their canned food. Is it going to be okay? They didn't have air conditioning. You know, what are we going to do? Okay, take a deep breath because you're going to be okay. You're not talking about a prolonged period. It happens. But if you're in, say, Washington and they got 116 degree weather, which is highly unusual for there, right? What you do after it comes down to normal temps is just go check them. Go make sure they're okay. Check them about every month. Make sure they're okay. It's a good practice anyway to be going into your pantry and checking to see what's happening. But the ideal storage temperatures are 50 to 70, 75 degrees, no light, no moisture. That's what you want. Um, it's not catastrophic if you can't get that. I have an entire bedroom that is my pantry. Now we do have central air. It is on at normally 75 degrees, okay? So I'm right there at the top of that. But there are times when I don't feel like messing with it and it'll get 80 in there. I haven't lost anything as a result. So take a deep breath and you're doing great. Okay, everyone, that is this week's canning chat. Remember, if you have a question, I welcome them. I love them. Throw them in the comment section down below. I will respond with checkout next week and that guarantees that your question will be in the 
line up next week okay and check out the playlist if you're new because definitely we've got a lot of questions out there and maybe we've already answered your question until next time remember you can check us out on Instagram and Facebook and please be safe